In this video, we are going to discuss one of the important features of ASP.NET Core that is dependency injection. Dependency injection is a design pattern that achieves loose coupling between objects and the dependencies. As you might already know, design patterns are some kind of proof solutions to some existing problems. This particular design problem solves the problem of tight coupling. This is our web API. Uh, we are going to discuss dependency injection design pattern. But before that, let's discuss, let's understand the existing things and existing structure of this web API. In this web API, we have one controller, that, that is to do controller. Then DTU folder, which has a DTU class. And mm, we have this model to do item. So as of now, what we have done is, so we have different action methods like get all, which gets all the to-do items. Then if we pass this ID, then we have this get to-do item by ID and we have different action methods. If you look at this web API, here as of now, we don't have any database inside. We have prepared this test data inside this list. And if you look at the structure of our existing web API, this action methods, see, here we have all this logic inside this controller. It's the same is for all the action methods. This is typical example of tight coupling. If I want to reuse this functionality, it is not possible because I have tightly coupled this code into this action method. We are going to start by refactoring this code. What we are going to do, we are going to create an interface uh, which will have declaration for all these methods. This controller we are going to make use of dependency injection and we are going to inject the dependency and then we are going to make use of that. Functionality is not going to change but the way we structure the things is going to change. In this interface, I am going to add the structure for all those methods. See, I have added this get all which whose return type is of type to do item class then get by id, add, update, patch, delete. So this is a structure. Now, here I have this class to do service. This class is going to implement that I to do service interface. Now we are going to provide implementation. Now we are going to refactor this class. I will move this list of to do items to this to do service class. This is our mock data. In this class, I will write necessary logic. In this class, I have written all the necessary logic. This is add method. This method is going to receive this class, receive this item, which is of type to do item. Then we are going to, we are going to create new to do item. In this case, this private list is our mock data. As of now, we don't have any database setup. That is the reason we are working with this private list. That's fine. So, purpose of this add method is to add new item to the data source, which is doing that. This method will receive this new item and it will check. It will add this new item to this list. Then we have this delete method. It will first check if we have some existing item. If existing item is not null, then we are deleting that item as this is a list we are removing that item from this list and we are returning that item in this case get all method will return all the to do items then this get by id method will receive this id and it will return the item which will match this id then we have this patch method then next we have this update method again we are checking if there is existing item then we are updating so this way this to do service class has all the necessary logic i have removed existing code from these action methods just to avoid confusion now coming to dependency injection this controller class is going to depend on this to do service or this to do service interface for the necessary methods. 
Earlier we had all the logic inside this controller. Now what we have made, we have created a separate interface and we have a separate class that implements that interface. This way we have made our application a little bit more scalable and now we can easily implement dependency injection because we have created something that we can depend upon. Very important and fantastic feature about ASP.NET Core Framework is this has built-in support for dependency injection. Now ASP.NET Core Framework itself has built-in support for dependency injection. Earlier we used to depend on third-party frameworks such as Autofac, Unity, Ninject and many more other frameworks. Now ASP.NET Core itself has the support so that is the reason things have become more easier. Earlier our application was tightly coupled. We have created this abstraction I to do service. Then we have created this to do service class where we have all the implementation. Okay, as part of dependency injection, our important step is to register the dependency. Where are we going to register the dependency? Here, as you already as you might know that program.cs file is the startup file of ASP.NET Core Framework. Here we have program.cs file. Here we are going to register our service. Here we have this builder which is an instance of web application builder and services. In order to register our service with dependency injection container, we are going to make use of add scoped. We are going to discuss this add scope method. Now let's understand. We are going to register. We are registering our service with dependency injection container. And here dependency is I to do service. And we are going to tell whenever I inject I, do, I to do service, framework has to provide the implementation that is going to be to do service. In this case, we want whenever I inject I to do service, framework has to create instance of to do service. This means whenever I inject I to do service, framework is going to provide me an instance of to do service class. Just to keep the thing simple, I have deleted all the existing code. Assume that we are starting fresh. Okay, now using dependency injection, we are going to use the methods that are available in to do service class. In our case, this interface I to do services dependency. Now we are going to inject this dependency into this to do controller class using a constructor. Let's add constructor to this class. Now, now we are going to inject this dependency. I to do service. This is our Okay, this is our dependency. Now we are going to inject this dependency. Let's declare one private field here. See, injecting the dependency is very simple. As we have created a separate interface, we have already registered that interface with dependency injection container. So dependency injection container knows which instance to provide. Simply we have injected this dependency using this controller. If I want to return all the to-do items, I can call this get all method and I can get all the existing to-do items. Now we can also add a check. If there are no items, then we can return not found. This will return 404 as status code. Then client application will understand there are no items. And if there are any items, then we can return this list. Same way we can write logic for all other methods. Here what we are using is constructor dependency injection. If you ask me, are there any other ways to inject the dependencies? Yes, there are two more options. One more option is property dependency injection. And other option is method injection. As we have already discussed, in case of constructor injection, we use constructor to inject the dependency. Here, I to do service is the dependency. In this case, what will happen when we uh, when we inject the dependency inside a constructor, when the instance of this to do controller is created, that means when the object is created, dependency injection container 
dependency injection container creates an instance of this i to do service and that container injects that dependency as parameter to this to do controller constructor uh, and and constructor injection is the most commonly used approach in case of dependency injection see here is an example for property injection see i have removed the constructor if you notice i have added this i to do service as property and i'm using one specific property from services and then i'm using this property to do service to call this get all method see in this case specifying this from services attribute is very important this will indicate that we are implementing property injection then dependency injection container will provide the instance here is an example for method injection we have removed constructor we have removed property now we are injecting this dependency inside this method see here I'm using this i to do service as parameter and if you notice again i'm using this from services attribute in our web api we are using constructor injection and constructor injection is the most widely used approach we have discussed what is dependency injection and how we can achieve dependency injection now understanding these add scoped understanding these methods is very much important here if you notice while registering the dependency i'm using this add scoped now instead of add scoped i get different options i can go for add singleton or i have one more option add transient see and transient these are different methods to register the dependency with dependency injection container and they play very important role while managing the life cycle of the instance of the dependency we have different service registration methods like add scoped add transient and singleton and they decide how the instance is managed if you use add scoped, then services are created once per request. That means HTTP request. If you make new HTTP request, then the again then again the service is created. In case of add transient, services are created every time they are requested. Even if it is same HTTP request, if a service is requested a different place, then each time instance is created. Singleton services are different. They are created once and shared throughout the application's lifetime. Even if application receives multiple HTTP requests, same service is shared. If you are a complete beginner, one common question that you may get is because in most of the examples, we see that we use interfaces to create the dependency. Then is it necessary to create the interface or it is a must to have the interface in case of dependency injection? Then no. For um, there are several reasons why we create this interface but this is not always the case that you always you should create one interface and you have to and uh, you should always have interface see here what i can do is instead of writing this way i can inject my to-do service here then in my controller instead of this i to-do service instead of using this i to do service as the type i can see this i to do service now i will run this application i will try to get all see here i have a response However, do remember using this abstraction offers several benefits. So, this is not the suggested approach. If it is that much necessary, you can go for that. Otherwise, this is the, this is the most efficient approach to apply dependency injection. Let's quickly recap and conclude our session. In case of dependency injection, first we create the dependency. We, uh, or, you, or you can say we decide the dependency. In this case, we wanted to create one abstraction and use that abstraction as our dependency so we have created this i to do service and here we have this 
class that implements this i to do service this is our dependency now after deciding the dependency import next step is to register the dependency with dependency injection container the reason is whenever we inject the dependency this container will resolve the uh, dependency and, will, and it will provide us the required ins next wherever is necessary we inject the dependency again we have discussed there are different ways to inject the dependency we have chosen constructor dependency injection and we can go for property injection as well as method injection based on our requirement we can choose any of the injection methods but popular and most widely used method is constructor dependency injection uh, after injecting the dependency the last step is to use that service rest everything will be taken care by the framework mm -hmm.